R1T is a groundbreaking vehicle for the all-electric market. Where there are trucks, there are buyers, at least here in North America, where this guy is currently positioned. We've already had our first drive review of the Rivian R1T, and we just recently completed our official 70 miles per hour highway range test. But today, we are finally giving it a full review. So I have here with me a launch edition truck equipped with the latest software update, version 15, and we're going to give you a full overview of the truck if you're considering buying one. And if you happen to be one of our loyal viewers who's already up to speed on all things EVs, stick around because I promise you'll learn something as well. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe to the Inside EVs YouTube channel. You can also follow us and interact with us on social media using the handle Inside EVs. So let's start in the most logical place by telling you about the truck we have here with us today. Now, I already mentioned that this is a launch edition, which is already sold out, but you can configure this exact same truck on the Rivian website. And when you do, it costs $95,900. And that is today as we film this video. And of course, subject to change because their configurator, as we've seen over the last few months, uh, can vary from time to time. This truck is the Adventure Trim, which is the more expensive of the two. It starts at $73,000 and you get a few more features, especially on the interior. From there, we get quad motor all wheel drive for $6,000 and the upgraded large battery pack, the 135 kilowatt hour pack for another six grand. On top of that, there are a bunch of different features that we'll talk about the pricing as we go along and we get to our as tested price of $95,900 before any federal incentives that you might qualify for. Rivian will sell you a truck with smaller dual motor configuration and will also sell you one with the standard smaller battery pack. In each of those cases, you can do one or the other or both. It's a $6,000 increase with each option respectively. But when you tick either of those boxes, that means your truck is not coming until 2024. And that's just an estimation. All right, that is enough information at the top. Let's get in to talking about this truck specifically. I swear this thing is Disneyland for cool features. Rivian should be really proud of that. This is their first vehicle to market and it is just stacked with cool things that I've never seen in a car before. Starting with the key fob, it's not always the most exciting thing with a car, but just look at the design. You can easily clip it onto your pocket or your key ring, it's just kind of clever. Then the locking noise, I won't talk through it, it's a bird tweeting, which I just think is hilarious and kind of fun, definitely very different. When you unlock the truck, you get greeted by the light bar, the DRLs pop open, uh, and you have the mirrors and the door handles fold out, so you know the truck is awake and ready to go. Two presses on the left side of the key fob, you'll see the lights go amber, and you have access to your power frunk. Just under 12 cubic feet of space in here, easily room for at least one or two carry-on suitcases, just a creative use of space. There's a button under here, you can power close it, or of course you can use the key fob to do that again. Let's talk about the rest of this thing because, oh my God, we have to start with the color. Rivian Blue, it's a $2,500 option. In my opinion, it is the best look for the R1T. It's just fantastic. Honorable mention to Adventure Green. That's another great looking color on this truck. But I swear the amount of people that just stare at this thing because it looks so foreign for a mid-size pickup truck, the blue just stands out, looks incredible. Right here, Pirelli Scorpion All-Terrain Tires. This truck is rated by the EPA 314 miles. When you put on these all-terrain tires and 20-inch wheels, the range reduces, according to Rivian, by 40 miles. So your best case scenario is probably around 275 or so. Like I mentioned, we do have an official 70 miles per hour highway range test. Be sure to check that out if you haven't done so already. Moving alongside of the truck, the thing in total is 117 inches, which puts it in a space between the Ford F-150 and the Toyota Tacoma. The way this thing feels, it does split those two categories right now. It's not too big, but it certainly doesn't feel super compact either. Right here is probably the feature you're most familiar with. I remember seeing this for the first time, the Rivian gear tunnel. This is a great place to throw a snowboard or just additional space in general. There's just under 12 cubic feet. Um, that's before we even get to the bed or the inside of the cab. So with the front and here, you have 22 combined cubic feet of space just to put extra things, really creative use of space. This is also load bearing, I believe up to 300 pounds. You can stand on it and access roof rails or just the top of the truck in general. This is a pickup truck, so of course we have to talk about the bed. There's a surprising amount of really innovative features back here. Like I already mentioned on the key fob, two presses right here will drop down your tailgate automatically. It's only automatic on the way down. It is manual on the way back up. <clears throat> There's a secondary button right here to drop it. Right here, 
is the option for your power tonneau cover. It's a $3,000 option for the automatic one at least. There is an option for a manually adjustable one as well. Now I will say in our experience with the truck this week, it has been pretty buggy. There's a problem I think with the sensor. It keeps thinking that there's something in its way, but there is not. Right here is part of your air compressor kit. So there's a full cord in here with different bits and you plug it in to this side of the bed. You can adjust the PSI as you wish. Now this is obviously a great way to air down your tires before you go off-roading, as we'll do later. But if you have mountain bikes or something else that just needs air, really uh, easy solution for doing that. In total, there are 1,760 pounds of payload that you can put in the back of your R1T. We now know the Ford F-150 Lightning can offer you 2,000 pounds of payload, so it is a bit down compared to the Lightning. That truck is obviously more positioned as a work truck. This is a little bit more adventure oriented, so you might not be using it for work purposes. And on that side of the bed, we have lighting on both sides to make sure you can see everything, tie down hooks at all four corners, and two additional outlets to plug in things as you need. So like I said, a bunch going on in the bed of the R1T. If you're deciding whether or not you want the adventure trim, the interior is really where most of your money goes. There's three big ticket items that I can think of. The first is these seats are heated and ventilated with the adventure trim. The Meridian sound system, which sounds phenomenal, I have to tell you, that's exclusive to adventure and this huge piece of matte wood trim. And the trucks that are not adventure, it's just going to be matte black. And this is a really cool part of the interior overall, which just has this very uh, recycled, futuristic EV vibe. It's something we've seen with other cars. It reminds me a lot of the Polestar 2 actually with its overall aesthetic. And much like other EVs on the road, this is all vegan interior. So it's not real leather. The floor mats are all recycled plastic and then the wood is reclaimed too. So they did a good job of being environmentally conscious when they built out this interior. The seats are great. There's passenger and driver lumbar support. They're both automatically adjustable and you can save your settings in the screen when you do so. Uh, right here is a wireless charger for your phone, but it might as well be an ice rink because your phone absolutely slides back and forth with any sort of slight acceleration. Only if you have like a sticky phone case does it work. They could really use some adjusting there. Cup holders that pop out here, those are nice. And Hold a pretty good sized water bottle. Down here is really your only big storage space in addition to the center console. No glove box in the R1T. They say a lot of the computer stuff is actually tucked in right behind there. Other than that, the sense of space up here is really good. The sight lines forward and backward are great. And it's just easy going for long road trips. If I had one major critique, it's this. It's the glass roof, which is again, something we see in a lot of EVs these days. There's no cover for it, and it does let in a ton of heat. Now, Rivian tell me that they are exploring options for ways to cover this up, and they should keep exploring because it gets nice and toasty in here uh, when the sunshine is out. Let's check out the backseat. Here in the back seat, things are actually pretty good. I'm sitting behind myself right now and I am not a tall human being. I'm five foot eight. So if you have a taller driver in front of you, you could start to run into legroom issues, but you know, generally things are not too bad. Same deal with headroom. There's actually a decent amount of space. Sometimes a mid-sized truck can clamp down, especially in the back seat. Center console here, you can lift up for a little bit of storage. There's two cup holders and there's access to the gear tunnel via the interior, which I think is kind of cool. You have controls for your overhead illumination, uh, temperature controls, two heated seats. And as my producer just pointed out, in the back, you actually control your own vent and can control where the air hits you. What a lucky thing for those getting to ride in the back. Overall, not too bad, but I still think that this is a problem overhead. I wish there was a shade because anytime you look up, the sun is looking right at you. And right in front of me, there's this little matching section of matte wood, which is really neat. A coat hook, and then we have two USB-C ports and then two additional down here, so more places to plug in your devices. Speaking of, let's go check out the tech. So I have a not so controversial theory that when Rivian was designing the system, it had a very close eye on Tesla. When you think about when they were developing this truck, Tesla was really the only major player in the EV space that had a system like this, so it makes sense that there are similarities. Um, as a general rule, I prefer this Rivian system to those that I've experienced in a Tesla product. It's just kind of easier to get between the menus, but the overall vibe without buttons, as you can see, very much carries over Tesla and Rivian, sort of the same vein of thinking there. Let's just go through the menus as we see them in order here. Here is climate controls, again, just like a Tesla. 
you have to control the vents up here on the screen. I think it's a little more cumbersome than it needs to be. I mean, in any car you've ever gotten in, have you even thought about just moving the vent manually? No, you haven't. It's just kind of more difficult to do it on the screen, but it's easy, it's easy to access everything. Heated seats, ventilated seats, heated steering wheel. The controls are pretty straightforward. The navigation I've been very impressed with. You can have it in either 3D or 2D mode and updates very quickly. Here you see all the chargers in our specific area right here in Malibu. The green designates DC fast charging too. So you can also see how many stalls are available and the best option for charging. When you plug in navigation, it will of course account for how much charge the truck has too. Searching for destinations has been really easy too. And it has some data populated in like Yelp when you plug in a restaurant. So that's all good stuff. Over here to the entertainment section, Rivian has baked in native Spotify, and I love that. If you're a Spotify user, it's very easy to get through and find exactly what you're looking for. This is Rivian Spotify account, so don't judge me, even though I will you know, take credit for this. I for sure was listening to Dua Lipa and Harry Styles. Sorry, I'm not gonna complain about that. Tune in radio, Bluetooth streaming, everything is there to support it if you don't like native Spotify. Over here is the drive modes. We're gonna go into this more in depth as we drive the truck along, but you can see the different drive modes you had uh, and the difference in air suspension. So if you're going to a parking garage, for example, and you need to squat the truck to fit, you can do so right here. Over here is more general information on the truck. This is the most uh, accessible page. You can do the frunk, the charge port, gear tunnel on either side, the tonneau cover, and the tailgate all in one menu. Here's charging information. This is the only place that you can see the truck's state of charge. I wish they just had it available in the instrument cluster right in front of you, but at least you can access it somewhere. Um, and you can see some of the other charging information, including when you're plugged in at a DC fast charger. And then down there, just some more general info about the truck. Going into settings, here's where you can see our latest software update. And I wanted to talk about that because they've added some pretty cool features in this latest round. There's now a Homelink garage door opener integrated into the screen. They've put in auto high beams on the truck and there's 500 amp charging now available for the first time on R1T. You can actually go through and see everything they've changed just like with any good truck or car that has uh, automatic software updates. Then at the bottom, there's this little guy to show you, I don't know what exactly, it's kind of a cool creative touch. This is a great system to work with. It's been completely painless the entire week. Uh, and it's one of the better parts of the R1T experience. Honestly, this is the part of the video that I was most looking forward to because driving the R1T, especially on a great Canyon road like this, is a completely foreign experience. It's actually where I'm gonna start. If you're coming from another pickup truck that has an engine, I don't care if it's an F-150, Tacoma, something big, something small, even some of the most capable combustion trucks like a Raptor or a TRX, this is still a completely new ball game. Especially with the quad motor setup, we have 835 horsepower and an electric motor, like I just said, at all four wheels. And that means the acceleration is in a word astounding that's the first thing that comes to mind it is remarkable how fast you can get this thing moving straight line corner doesn't really matter i will say once you get it up to speed i'm surprised by the amount of noise that you get inside of the cabin there's a ton of wind noise that's coming in through the a pillar over here i'm not sure if that's a particular issue with this specific truck, this is one of the earlier builds, um, but beyond the wind noise, the motors themselves generate quite a lot of whine. Um, it's kind of cool. It's like a nice sci-fi noise to go along with the acceleration, but it might not be everybody's cup of tea. Let's talk regen for a second. Rivian R1T is all about brake regen. Uh, you cannot turn it completely off. There's standard mode or high, and high really does a good job of bringing it down speed. As you can see right now, foot comes off the accelerator pedal, truck slows down quite a bit. When you're not relying on the regen, the brakes do a good job, but this is probably the biggest thing to remember with the R1T. Physics are still relevant. This truck weighs over 7,000 pounds, and in this case, it's rolling on all terrain tires. You can get it going quick, unbelievably fast. But guess what? You still have to slow it down. And doing so requires a lot of brakes going into a corner. And you really need to be cognizant of this thing's size if you're driving it in an aggressive manner. That said, there is a sport mode. 
that lowers down the suspension, squats the truck a little bit, makes it more aerodynamic. Um, and you get your choice of two different uh, driving modes for the air suspension. There's standard, which is what they call soft, or a mode called stiff. And I haven't been touching that pretty much all week because take their word for it when Rivian says stiff, uh, it really makes the ride borderline unbearable. Leaving it in soft, I don't think does anything to negatively affect the handling either. When the pavement runs out, the Rivian soldiers on with little trouble. Our day off-road exemplified the truck's insane abilities on inclines with its torque and declines with its regen. It's effortless for the driver to modulate the power and make small tweaks as you go along. And unlike some larger off-road tuned trucks that we've tested on this trail, the R1T was narrow enough to fit without scraping against plants or trees. The air suspension raises in the truck's off-road setting, which obviously improves the ground clearance. But more than one time, the truck refused to adjust its suspension, offering a warning that the compressors were overheated. Turning the R1T off and on again remedied this problem each and every time. Let's go over the most important charging information. Now, first of all, a 135 kilowatt hour battery pack is big. This truck takes a lot of energy to do that 275 miles or so. And in this case, at a level three station, it takes a little bit more money to do so. So your best case scenario is going to be charging at home at a level two system. The Rivian can do up to 48 amp and it'll get better over time uh, with over the air updates. So like I said, best case scenario at the house, charge the truck overnight and it should cost less than half of what it would to do here at a level three. This truck should be able to do up to 200 kilowatt DC fast charging at an appropriate machine. Although through our time this week with the truck, it hasn't gone over 150 kilowatt. Now we have more than one reason to believe that that's an Electrify America issue and not a Rivian issue, but it still goes to show it's not doing the best case scenario. In the future, Rivian claims that this truck should be able to do up to 300 kilowatt charging, which is much faster. Now we have a full charging breakdown of the R1T, including a comparison of what it'll do against an F-150 Lightning. So head to the link in the description below for all of the information. I came into this test wanting to know whether or not the R1T lives up to the hype. Recommending a vehicle for somebody to buy that costs this money, $95,000 before incentives, is a big responsibility and it's not something that I take lightly. Short answer, yes. Absolutely, the R1T is a fantastic, fantastic truck and really impressive across the board. Two caveats that come with that. One, this particular truck we had did have a few hiccups, but it's nothing that I would consider inexcusable for a new product from a new company. Two, you're paying a premium to be the first. Starting with the F-150 Lightning and onward from there, there will be more affordable electric trucks. If the Rivian's huge power output and really cool list of new features doesn't excite you, then I would recommend waiting in line for them to come. The R1T is a triumph and something that Rivian should be really proud of. But now we just have to see whether or not they can keep up the momentum, which is never an easy task for a new automaker. Thanks for watching.